I am joined by former Bellator light heavyweight world champion, Liam McGeary. How are things? It is a pleasure to see you again. How's it going, buddy? Nice to see you too. I'm doing well. I appreciate the time. How are you holding up during these times? Um, all right, actually. You know, just hanging out with the kids. You know, there's, uh, they like to have fun and I like to have fun, so. <laughs> yeah. I see you uh, worked on a little uh, garden. Is that right? Oh, yeah, yeah. I made a little garden, like. I had to keep myself occupied. Listen, I've been busy for, for the last year. I've been out of action. So I've had a lot of time on my hands. Yeah. So I, I needed to keep myself busy and occupied. And a garden came out of it. A couple of gardens. Like I've got one downstairs going as well. Yeah, there we go. Damn right. I also see on your Instagram flurry for 15. Was that like a was that like a challenge that you got uh, that, that you just did on Instagram? A, a friend of mine uh, from Church Street Boxing Gym tagged me in it about a week ago, and I finally got around to doing it. So uh, and and that was yeah, that was that flurry for fifteen. I don't think it was just a, a challenge in, in in like a regular challenge. It was just a normal like yeah, set you set, you set a challenge between your mates. See, I saw that video on your Instagram. I'm really happy that no one was standing in front of you because I think that it wouldn't have been a very uh, nice day for anyone if they had got hit by any one of those punches. I know, yeah. That was, uh, that was flying nicely then. I just yeah, did a little warm-up as well. It felt good. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Well, as we are aware, you have been sidelined. After your fight with Phil Davis, you broke your jaw. Walk me through that recovery. How's it been going? Are you healed yet? Um, so... I had the surgery like a couple of days after the, the, the fight. Um, the, the, the surgery, I thought the surgery went well. But then after about six weeks, the, the, something had happened and the jaw didn't take. So scar tissue had grown in and it, the dentist had to go back in again, scratch out all the scar tissue and do a completely different surgery. So that put me out. Now, it, it, the dentist, the doctor said he's, he doesn't want me doing anything for at least a year. So the year would be July 27th is when I had the second surgery. So after that, then I can start doing a little bit more, a um, little bit more training and, and a little bit more, but we can't train at the moment. So all the gyms are shut. So that's why I'm just taking, I'm just, just looking out, just looking out for the kids, man, hanging out with them and just having fun. Yeah. Just stuff that I've missed out doing because I'm always stuck in a fight camp somewhere or doing something or other with the fighting. Right, right. Of course, hanging out with the kids must be absolutely incredible. Uh, spending the extra quality time, but I'm sure also this this hiatus from competing in the cage and training the, those rigorous train camps that they've actually uh, been a benefit to. Do you think that they've uh, that that's that this break that you've had has kind of been a benefit? It has, and obviously, I was wired shut for six months, so like it's very hard to. Like, I had a lot of positive friends around me, and. It's very hard to take a positive note when you can't eat your own dinner or breakfast. You know what I mean? Clean your teeth properly. Like it, it, it was, it was hard, you know. So, um, so yeah, it, it took a while. Then I got married. Some of my, the what they took the wires out just just before the wedding. So I had to learn how to smile and everything. Like it was, it was. It's all been a bit of a process, you know. So I, I, I just started going back rolling. Um, I was working like the leg entry game and it just. Just doing some stuff, weren't with a couple, couple of good training partners. Nothing, nothing above the the shoulder line. Like it was stay away. But then, uh, yeah, I just started, just just about to get into a little bit more, and then it, this happened. So back to square one again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, congratulations on the wedding. That's a, that's such exciting news. Oh, thank you, man. Anytime, anytime. So obviously you lost the belt to Davis. Davis lost it to Bader. Bader is doing really, really well at the moment as champion. Take me, uh, take me on that journey. Take me on the path back to that title, back to, to hopefully getting a fight with Ryan Bader. What, the foreseeable future, what does that plan look like? What do you need to do to get back to that, to, to that position? Just keep winning. Yeah. I have to get back in that winning seat, you know. Um, and it's a, MMA game is a funny old game. You know, the fighters can go up, down, up, down. It's, it's, never, it's never, ever over, you know. Yeah, mentally, mentally things could go wrong. So I, I think now... I've had that time. I've had that time to sit down. I've had that time to think about where I was and what was going on and where it was headed. And now it's, I've, I've got it out of my system. You know, it's it's time to get back into it and get serious. You know, I've got three kids now. I've got to fight for. So it's uh, it's it's a it's a different game now for me. So there's there's a lot more diff, there's a lot more riding on it. On yeah. these fights. 
Yeah. yeah, I was going to ask, kind of elaborate on that for me because uh, your first eleven fights in Bellator, you and still you are, you're an absolute star. But eleven and oh, we're going to talk about some of those specific fights in a second. But in your last six, going two and four, obviously looking at your opposition, you are fighting the top of the top. Your your level of opposition, crazy difficult, crazy challenging fighters. What did go wrong though? When you kind of step back and look, what do you think went wrong? And how have you kind of been writing those wrongs? Um. You know, I think I think there was a lot to do behind the scenes. There was a lot of stuff going on as well as the fight. And when I was going on that tear, there was nothing else. Nothing really mattered. I was just sort of focused on fighting, training. I was in the gym whenever and every all day, every day. So and New York was just that place. It was like I wasn't sat on a train. I was I was actually training. You know. So I think I was able to do that there. And then things started changing. Life getting older as well. You know. It's like. Life got into it. Injuries then started coming into play as well. So I, I think with this last year, the, the jaw injury, like, yeah, there was the leg, there was the hand. It was, there's been a lot going on. So it's just, but it's a tough sport we're in, you know. I'm, I know exactly what the fuck we're doing. It, it, it's, it, it is a tough sport. So I know we can get hurt and bones can break, but they also heal and they get yeah. stronger. And you learn from that mistake. And I know now I'll pick my hands up when I get off, off the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Something the commentators have said, because I, I've been watching a couple of your fights uh, over the past couple of weeks, because I am a huge fan of yours. I, I think you're an absolutely brilliant fighter. Uh, but something that the commentators had had continuously said was, Nemkov, he kept leg kicking you, and the commentators were curious as to why you hadn't switched dances. Was there a specific, and of course, in the heat of the moment, n- none of us can say anything because we're not in that cage with you. But is there a reason why you didn't switch dances? I'm just curious. No, I mean, No. Why, why chat? I, I, I fight that way. It was hurting, but it wasn't hurting to the point where I was like, like he broke my leg in the first round, like a fracture in my, in my leg, first kick. Like I've been leg kicked before, and this kid hit me, and you know when you get hit, it's like right, and it, it kind of goes away. But this went extra longer, and I was oh hang on a minute, why, why is that? Why is it not? Why is it not stopped throbbing yet? And, and the more and more kicked. It kind of just went numb, and I didn't really feel it too much, so it wasn't affecting me. I was still kicking him. I was still yeah. moving around on it. It wasn't. It wasn't as though I was limping. And then that was like the last, the last year. I think I looked at the clock, and I think there was. I don't think there was much longer left. No, there wasn't. So I was like, yeah, I got this. Dan came walking over to me, and I was like, no, 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 I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Like, then he threw one last leg kick and hit me. I was like, no, no, please, just stop it. That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> He was like, I can't watch this any longer. I was like, no, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, man. It is what it is. It of is course. It is. Of course, anything can happen in a cage. You know that best. Uh, but, I mean, listen, even though your legs were numb, I have no idea. I have no idea how you took that many kicks. I mean, uh, one of his kicks, and then, and then you divide it into a half. If he kicked me with a half of one of those kicks, I would have been on the ground. I would have never got up again. That kid, when I hit him, it was, I think I broke my own foot hitting him. He was solid, like. A tough fucking kid, like. <laughs> and then he, he hurt his foot. Something like that. He literally hurt like his, his foot, was... kicking you the whole time. And I mean, it's literally damn like kicking right. a tree. Fucking damn right as well, you know. Hey, listen, I'm made of steel, right? So I'm not saying he he's he's tough, but like you're gonna mangle something by hitting me, and I'll take it, like yeah. until it's that mentality we have, you know. Yeah, <laughs> you're an absolute boss. All right, I want to kind of throw this back a little bit. Bell Tour 95, your Bell Tour debut. Walk me how that fight kind of went together, because obviously your first three pro fights were dominant, very impressive. That, I believe that Bell Tour debut was in New Jersey, so that would make sense. But talk to me about how that fight came together, and what was your initial reaction when you're like, holy shit, I'm going to be a Bell Tour fighter? Um, so I was training out at Kurt Pellegrino's gym, and uh, – there was there was nothing going on, you know. I'd been over his six. I was on the visa on the on the electron visa, so I had to come over for like three months and then leave and then come back again. So I'd come back and I was just coming up to the end of the third month and I was like, "Yo, I said, what's happened? I've had a fight. I had that fighting ring of combat, nothing, and and I won that one, and now nothing has happened." I was like, I, "I'm I'm a ghost." Go jump ship and go try out some other gyms. Oh no no no! Give me five minutes. Give me five minutes. He comes running back out. He's like, I've got your contract for Bellator. And I'm like, is that all it took? <laughs> so I, I signed the contract. We had to go back a whole load of fucking red tapes, visas, this, that problem. I think that took about eight months to sort. Finally got back. And then, uh, and yeah, then the fight. Uh, who was the first one? 
Oh, what was his name? Anton Talamantes. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's the one. And uh, But yeah, I mean, listen. Nobody knew who the fuck guy was. I was just some dude with a nipple tattoo. So I've been told, like, you know what I mean? I'm a dude, Kate. I came over from an island, like a, a, a Jersey, what? New Jersey? No, mate, the original Jersey, right? I came over and they were like, let's stick him with a wrestler. Right. And I think he was um, Ohio State, I believe. I, I think, I think something like, he was, he was, he was well known for his wrestling, like, you know? So I was like, right, it didn't bother me, man. I was, I was up for a fight. Like, so I just went in there and just did my thing. I knew he was going to take me down. Like, I was <laughs> never going to stop that one. But it was uh, the violence that was gonna, it was going to take. That's what I like. You demolished that dude. I mean, it really wasn't even close in the slightest. Then my elbows off my back. I remember bang, bang, and he just moved. I was like, oh, all right, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I remember your... Pretty much that your entire journey to popularity in Bellator. I mean, five five first round finishes. I mean, you were just destroying dudes left and right. And then, of course, Emmanuel Newton in 2015. At that point, Newton had knocked out uh, King Mo with that spinning back fist. Newton was obviously yeah. really well known. And then, pretty much five fights. And that was two years later. You're fighting for Bellator World Title. Walk me through that. That was like, I mean, I, I kind of always knew that I was going to do it years and years ago. Like before I even started all this, right? But to actually do it in, th- in such a short amount of time was unbelievable. Like, I, I, was, I was still trying to process it myself, you know? But it, I just kind of just went with it. Like, if you're fighting next month. Okay, sound, down. Tournament. Okay, perfect. Got this dude. Okay, I don't really care. What about this one? He's fought the, the second, the journeyman. He fought some real top-rate fighter before. I can't remember his name. Doesn't matter. Like, fucking, let me, let's go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, t- truthfully, Liam, it's undeniable. I mean, I, I literally remember watching all of your fights because, I mean, especially back then, I was a huge fan. I'm like, this dude's going to be a world champion. Five fights in a row, five, five finishes, first round. I'm like, there's no way that he doesn't get a shot against noon against any champion. And so, I, I mean, I, rem- I remember that fight like it was yesterday. What a fight. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I like that one, yeah. yeah it was, was a good fun. one. And, and then right after that, <laughs> you beat Newton. Great winning the world title. Then you submitted, out of all dudes, the legend Tito Ortiz. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. That was, uh, that was, uh, but then, so the day, that was on a Saturday, and come the Monday, I was laying in hospital having a, having a surgery, the first to the surgery. So yeah. that's where it kind of fucking was like, oh, the body took it up, and I was like, listen, I need a break, surgery, then something else happened, and something else happened, and like, fucking Jesus, like that. Yeah. But at the same time, though, did you ever sit back and kind of fathom that you just took out a legend, one of the growths of the sport? Yes. Yeah, that, that, was, uh, that took a little bit of uh, – but I didn't uh, – it kind of – I was trying to put it off because I'm going to do uh, reports with him. We're going to do interviews. We're doing all sorts of like, tours, uh, media tour. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm with Tito Ortiz here. My mates are phoning me up. What are you doing? I was like, look, fucking Tito, you know? So it was, it was really surreal. Absolute sound guy, you know, very professional, like, give me a few tips and pointers and whatnot. Uh, and and we, we hung out, like, he's, he's, he's a good dude, you know? But, I mean, it was, I was trying not to let it get too much because, like, it, it was only an hour until afterwards I was like, dope, I've just submitted Tito to his, never been submitted before. And that's why I gave him the high five, you know, because it was like, dude, I, I know I beat you, but it was, I didn't fucking maul you and beat you, pump. I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to. Like, you've never been submitted. So I've just fucking changed that, you know? Yeah, yeah. Of course, it's going to be some time for, for, uh, for, for most fighters to get back in the cage at this point. But I want to leave a message for your fans. What would you like to tell them at this point in time? Injuries are all healed up. Everything's back to, back to where we was. I'm in a good place. Um, I just can't wait to get back in there and put on a show now. Um, yeah. Whenever, whenever I get back, when this jaw heals up, I'm hoping by the end of the year I should be back and put on a show. Hopefully they'll put a show on in Hawaii again. This COVID fucking virus clears up and, and we can get back to uh, doing what we all love doing.